Hi everybody, I am Jen Johnson and you are watching or listening to Thought by Thought Healing where I like to get on here and talk about everything having to do with chronic pain, chronic symptoms, and how to reverse them. Um, new neuroscience um, has proved that we can reverse these symptoms by approaching and targeting the brain instead of the body part. And that's really exciting news because that is a lot of hope for so many people in the United States and really in the whole world. And so I like to get on here and talk about that, um, especially from a Christian perspective, because I am a Christian. And I find that this work, this science is really just um, aligned with um, scripture, which is the way it should be. And so um, it's a deep passion of mine. I have really exciting news. Tonight, I'm going to be taking this YouTube channel, Thought by Thought Healing, and putting it on podcast platforms. And so you'll be able to listen to me instead of having to watch, which hopefully will be more convenient for a lot of you. So um, yeah, join me in excitement for that and subscribe there if that's easier for you. Um, also, with that change, I'm excited to um, shift I'm going to call it my second season, um, where I'm going to start shifting to having more interviews, maybe like one a month or something, where I interview um, professionals in the field uh, so you can hear kind of their research, what they've found, um, the science um, perspective on it, and um, hopefully that will be interesting um, and um, inspiring for you. So um, my first guest... I can't believe that I get to say this, but my first guest will be Dr. Howard Schubiner. And if you don't know who he is, you should definitely look him up because he is um, a little G god of mind-body medicine. And I just um, think the world of him. He, um, his book, Unlearn Your Pain, was part of my healing process um, for sure. And so um, Dr. Howard Schubiner, I'm just going to read a little bit about him. Um, he's an internist and the director of the Mind Body Medicine Center at Ascension Providence Hospital in Southfield, Michigan. He's also a clinical professor at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine. Um, that's only to say a little bit about him. So um, yeah, if you have any specific questions that you would like me to ask him on the interview on, on this channel, then please send them to me at thoughtbythoughthealing at gmail.com and I can ask them. I also am going to be having an interview with Eddie Lindenstein, who's a fellow uh, co-podcaster. Uh, he actually lives um, in near Seattle, Washington, too, so we're close to each other. Um, we've not met in person, but we have been able to connect um, via Zoom and et cetera during COVID, and I just really appreciate everything that he is doing. Um, and he kind of has a niche of, of talking about um, fitness involved in this, too. Um, so if you have any questions about that, um, he is your guy. And then also um, I have David Hanscom coming on in about a month, who is a spinal surgeon. So I will give you a reminder to send me questions for those two later on. But for now, if you have any for Howard Schubiner, send them my way. Um, yeah, so big changes here. I'm really excited for them. Um, it's been a goal that I've had for a while. And so it's kind of a big deal for me. Um, yeah, so thank you for um, supporting me up till now, and hopefully um, you'll continue to enjoy these um, talks um, on the podcast platform also. Okay, so now I want to transition to the topic for today, which is, I'm not sure how to exactly say this, whether I want to say like, you have the last word, you're, you are not your brain, um, be a leader, don't be a boss, something along these lines that... Um, and helps you to realize that your brain does not is not in charge. You do not always have to submit to your brain. And what I mean by that is we are um, when when we do not stop and look at what is happening in our subconscious, then we operate according to how our brain is wired. So you, the way you think, the way you feel, you, the way you emote, the your behaviors, beliefs, they will all um, be. Um, directed by your brain um, because of the way that it's wired. And the thing about that is that sometimes we feel victim to what our brain is telling us we should feel, think, act, all those things. And um, and sometimes our brain is wired in a way that is good and uh, efficient and effective and um, and it's it's something we should be grateful for. But 
it is important to stop and look at what is wired and how we're operating because We are not our brains. We get to wire our brains. The way, the things that we were taught, the things that we learned, the things that we accepted, um, they wire the brain. So we have control of how our brain is wired. This is why we are able to unlearn things and realize we were wrong. This is why we're able to break habits and um, and move forward. Um, This is why we're able to change what we believe because um, you can choose to um, rewire your brain you can choose a new way of of operating and thinking and we don't have to um, submit always to what our brain wants to believe and what our brain wants to think and emote Um, we have way more power and control than we think that we do and so just because your brain um, wants to be afraid of certain sensations and I will say that again, your brain wants to be afraid of sensations and therefore it is pain um, in a lot of situations. Um, just because the brain wants to wants to interpret the sensation in that way doesn't mean that you have to continue in that pattern. You can actually change the way your brain is wired. Especially for people who grew up in, in homes where um, any um, sensation that was uncomfortable or maybe slightly hurt or something um, when when the idea was to run to figure out what was wrong with you to the doctor or um, to baby it etc we kind of are wired around this idea that all sensations have to do with that there being something structurally wrong with us um, and that is um, actually I would say 90% of the time not true Dr. Howard Schubiner uses that number a lot and so do a lot of these other experts that um, are working with people to cure and reverse these um some of these diagnoses and um, syndromes and symptoms. And so that's one way uh, or one example of what I'm talking about. But also when it comes to chronic pain, um, there's often emotional underlying uh, struggles, um, pain and fear cycles that um, are wired into our brain and we're operating in a way that is... um, uh, the brain is having to activate the the physiology of the fight or flight nervous system, um, and so it's wired in, and um, and you're then you operate out of that. And what's happened is our brains have pretty much wired us into this corner where there is only a very small amount of real estate left that that the brain perceives as safe for you to operate in. And so we end up not going to social gatherings and we um, we don't find this situation safe and that situation safe. And so and we can't use our body in this way and we can't have this type of free personality and and all these things where the brain has told us that um, that we are no longer safe and we're now trapped. Um, we're kind of in prison in our own brains. And it seems like wisdom. It seems like the only way out. Um, and yet it's actually trapping you. And so when you get to realize that you can change how your brain is perceiving your life and therefore that, and to be clear that that perceiving is playing out in real symptoms. You really have anxiety. You really have IBS. You really have pain. None of it is in your brain, it, but it is controlled and sent um, by your brain to that muscle group, to those enzymes, to the pain receptors. Um, it, it, is a, it is a real message that you are receiving. And that's why it can be um, hard to realize that you have a choice in some of this. And so um, so the first step that I do this with my clients is to um, is to figure out like what and listen, maybe that's a better way of saying this, listen to what um, your subconscious, is believing what is your subconscious saying what is your pain saying what does it want um, and when we don't stop and listen then it goes disastrously because then we we submit to um, the brain which is like the boss and I'm going to talk a little bit about the boss versus leadership here and the brain is in a boss position um, it's telling you what to do and you have to you feel that you have to submit to it um, because it is wired and that's the easy way um, and wiring is not bad. It's just that in these cases, it is um, it is not producing good outcomes in us. 
Um, and so when we listen to the pain, we listen to the subconscious, what, what is underlying, what is the underlying belief here um, that can be uh, really powerful. Now, I don't know if you've ever been in a conversation with somebody who does not listen to you. I had a, um, a person in my life who once told me, um, it was like an acquaintance, once told me that he didn't need to listen to me answer any questions about myself because he already had me figured out and he didn't need my input on who I was. He, he already knew. Uh, you can imagine that that didn't go very well and it did not build trust um, or connection or no. Re- there was definitely no resolve there. Um, he's already made up his mind. And so in when it comes to our relationship with our pain, I do actually think that listening to what is behind it is really Im- important. And that's it's probably my favorite part of working with clients is is that part. Um, I had I've had somebody in the past um, say I don't I don't know how to listen. All I you know like. When I, when I do this, I, I, the only thing I can think of is relax. I'm just not good at this. Well, that's the answer. Relax. Your, your, your pain um, doesn't know how to relax. You don't know how to relax, and therefore your pain can't relax. And so um, her journey is to rewire her brain, to, to learn. And rewiring just means learn something new. That's all it means. Um, and so she gets to learn how to implement relax in her life. Is that easy? No, because the brain is really bossy. Um, but you have the opportunity to come in and have the last word. You get to come in and teach it. We wire our brains. We choose, if we want to, we can either let life go by and we just um, allow our brain to be formed and wired in the way we want, or we choose um, how it is. And so in, in these cases, when we're doing this work, we are choosing um, a different way. And um, so... Yeah, so so listening is the first step. Um, that's the sign of a good relationship. And yes, you have a relationship with your pain. I often have clients tell me that um, they're not afraid of their pain. And then when we um, when we look at um, the emotions that are behind it, um, the pain shows up, and the client feels, "I don't want that here. I don't like it. I want to get rid of it." Well. When you're in a relationship with somebody, anybody, and they don't want you there, they they don't like you. Um, it doesn't make you feel safe um, and it does not it, it sets you on edge and so unfortunately that is um, counter it's counterintuitive and counterproductive for uh, our for pain um, when we can choose to just accept it and not be afraid of the sensation it it, it calms down and it doesn't really have um, the need to send you the pain signal which is very counterintuitive um, and so once you've listened, um, then you get to take this leadership role. And uh, I kind of love this analogy of the difference between being a boss and being a leader. And it really sounds cool to say I'm the boss and we want to do that. We want to we talk to our brains and our pain and our body and say, I'm in charge and I'm the one and, um, and you're going to listen to me and pain, you're going to go away and I'm going to figure this out. And, and it's interesting because it doesn't work. Um, and I'm going to read a quote um, about boss versus leader. A boss ensures that you understand your work, but a leader supports and guides you through it. A good leader inspires people and makes them excited about their work. They empower their teams and do not threaten them. And um, when I first started healing, I really, I talked pretty harshly to my to my body parts when I started understanding this. I was like, well, I'll just tell it. You are safe. You're okay. Stop. I don't need you. Whatever. We're moving on. Um, and that actually doesn't really work. But when I come along as a leader and I encourage and empower, um, and yes, I am talking kind of to my pain, to the body part, um, and saying like, we're going to choose a different way of operating. We're going to choose um, to approach life in this way. I'm going to choose to not be afraid of the pain. Um, that kind of leadership, calm, gentle, um, but in authority um, language actually calms down the body. And then we can start to regulate that fight or flight nervous system. Um, but when we remain victim to our symptoms and um, kind of bow down to them and let them be bossy, um, then we will just live according to that kind of prison of wiring that we have in, in, in the brain. Um, so a couple other examples I have, um, or I had a client with the, like I was telling you about the relax, um, she's teaching, um, 
she's she's taking on a leadership role kind of of teaching her brain um, that she's going to choose a different way and learn how to relax. Um, I have another one who is learning how to show up to um, precarious situations with compassion and peace that passes understanding. Um, and another one who who's, whose brain has wired and, and made her to believe that certain emotions um, uh, are are dangerous and not um, not to be experienced. And um, a, a common theme for people is sorrow. Um, sorrow can feel um, scary, like we don't want to experience it. Um, and so she is she is actively learning to teach um, her hardwired brain um, that she wants to operate in a different way. And there is there is truth. Um, that supports that experiencing sorrow is a good thing and safe and allows it to escape the body and to leave. And, and it's all because it is safe because we have a God who loves us and experiencing that um, emotional pain um, with God is actually the safest place you can possibly be. Whereas hiding it and stuffing it into the proverbial nervous system of, of a rug um, is actually going to activate um pain and danger signals more and more. Um, I uh, There's a couple of verses that I find to be um, the wording to be really encouraging. Um, Philippians 4.8 talks about think on these things, which shows that you have authority. You get to choose how you think. You do not have to be um, victim to your habits. We are, you know, wiring is habits. You have a, you have a habit of biting your nails. You have a habit of showing up in fear. You have a habit of smoking. Um, you have a habit of experiencing pain. And yes, it is a habit. Um, it's called predictive coding when neuroscientists call about talk about it. And so um, we're we're breaking habits by choosing. Um, choosing to be a leader to our brain um, and and not always submitting to what we are wired. Um, wiring is great because it 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 makes us um, not have to work as much in life and to have to like think and operate all the time. The you know the wiring lets the subconscious kind of rule things, um, but at times it becomes unhealthy. And when we're in chronic pain, that is a sign that the subconscious is or the brain is wired in a way that the subconscious is operating out of out of beliefs that are wired into the brain that are not helping us in their fear um, oriented or anger oriented or. Um, shame oriented um, they're distressing emotions that are kind of wired into habitual um, responses in um, our lives um, so uh, an example for me I just remembered um, I wasn't planning on talking about this but but I had a habit um, when I was in pain of waking up and and um, rating my pain in my feet when I would get out of bed and be like how much pain do I have today um, and then kind of kind of that just started my day off kind of dread dreading the day um, and that was just how my brain habitually responded was to first things first check in structurally how am I doing um, and so I learned okay I got to change this habit um, and so I took I took charge as a leader and told my brain hey let's look forward to the day and I wouldn't let myself actually get out of bed until I picked two things that I was looking forward to in the day or thankful for for the day and also that I was thinking about something else besides my structural pain most of the time I would choose to pray for somebody um, something that was completely unrelated to self-focused me Um, and that slowly taught my brain there was a different way to approach the day there was a different way I didn't have to dread the day I didn't have to look for pain all the time so I took charge I took my authority back and um, and led my brain um, in kindness to uh, another way. Um, oftentimes, yeah, like I was talking about, these people want to talk to their pain in really this abrupt kind of authoritarian way. And um, it just, I found that it just doesn't really work very well. But if I can speak kindly to myself, it actually calms down the nervous system and lets the brain know, oh, Interesting. There's something about this situation that she is perceiving as safe. Maybe after a while, I can understand that I am safe in this scenario. Mornings are safe for me now because she is operating in a way that seems to believe that she's safe. And the brain will actually wire. This is science. (laughs) And I love it. I love that our 
I love that our thoughts wire our brains um, and so we can pick our thoughts like scripture is talking about. Um, Colossians 3 1 says set your hearts on blah 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 which means that again you have you have you get to decide you have power over what you set your hearts on. We're not just running in this automatic um, victim mode of um, always submitting and letting the brain have the last say. We get to we get to um, come in and direct things um, in a loving way. So um, that's my um, that was really helpful for me. I hope it is for you. I hope that um, you can um, this week be a leader for your brain. I know that sounds so strange and yet it is um it's really kind of amazing and um, you'll find yourself really encouraged by what you choose to want to teach yourself um uh, kind of like you would with a child um and helping them to free, be free and to enjoy life and not live in um, distressing emotions all the time so thanks for um thanks for listening again look for me on the podcast platforms i'm pretty excited for this Um, and would love any prayers for that and any suggestions of people that um, you would like to hear from um, you could send me those too because I do want to get a line of people that I could get on here to share their experience of TMS mind body syndrome neuroplastic pain neural circuit pain whatever your preference is all right thanks guys have a great week and I will see you back here next week with Howard Schubiner all right